Hey everyone, this is Greg Savage from MachineMasters.com and today we're going to jump into the second part of our writing to video series. Right off the bat I noticed that I had a lot of markers and I wasn't going to use them all so I start keying in on the ones that I really liked and deleting the rest. And since I'll be building the track uh, primarily off of uh, Derek Rose's moment here, I decided to make a loop marker uh, around the beginning and the end of his footage. So I'm going to dial in one here, see where this starts. And then I want the ending to be where the next transition is, right here at the four. So let's see if we can line that up. Okay, let's change this to zero as well. One, zero, zero. And drag this out to a loop. And let's test it. Okay. Now what I want to do is key in a little more precisely on where his crossover starts. It doesn't necessarily need to be where the ball hits the court, but, you know, maybe his movement. So I'm going to try here at 55. Mm, 52 or 53 might be better. Let's go at 53. Go down to the next crossover. Oops. Okay, and this one actually might be good at 60 or 55, somewhere around there. Let's try 60. Let's try 50. Yeah, it's better. Well, at least to me, it's better. With those two numbers put in, 53 and 50, what I start noticing is a lot of the other crossover points or, you know, close to the crossover points actually lined up in that area. Like this one's at 60. We can go ahead and put this one at 50 or 53. And it should line up fine because with audio and the video, it doesn't have to line up precisely. It just needs to be pretty close and it'll look like it's lining up precisely. So there's a few other crossovers that, you know, they just line up fine uh, based on the numbers that I've isolated out. So what this will allow me to do is not worry about composing to each and every section of the footage. I can worry about one or two and then loop it out and everything should pretty much line up. Now for the sounds I'm going to use, I'm just going to use a stock kit from Battery. Spire, one of my favorite synthesizers. And the Native Instruments Rickenbacker bass. These are the only sounds I'm going to use. I'm going to keep it real simple. Now to some spotting and doing all this it looks you know pretty boring in actuality it probably takes 10 to 15 minutes of work but what you're seeing is me breaking the process up over the course of a week or two or three so um with the markers set the way that i need them and the sounds loaded up we'll come back next week and we'll start composing the track from scratch and you'll see how everything lines up as always if you have questions please leave them below please share and like the video Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.